let's try another problem. Here we have a centrifuge with a radius of 20 centimeters. As I read, I'm going to go ahead and write that down. Radius 0.2 meters. And it accelerates from a maximum rotation rate of 10,000 RPM. Omega naught is 10,000 RPM. To rest in 30 seconds. Time equals 30 seconds. Omega final is zero. It's rotating counterclockwise, fine. What's the magnitude of the total acceleration of a point at the tip of the centrifuge at t equals 29 seconds? All right, so we have a constant angular acceleration, and we want to find my acceleration and the direction of the acceleration vector. So we want the magnitude and direction. All right. We have a formula that tells us how to combine my tangential and centripetal components of acceleration to get my overall acceleration of a point on a rotating body. That says this. My acceleration is equal to whatever the tangential component of acceleration is plus the centripetal component of acceleration. This is a linear acceleration. But we can relate some of these things to our rotational quantities that we know. We'll start with my tangential acceleration is equal to r alpha. That's fine, but I don't know alpha yet. I know it's a constant, but I don't know what it is. Since I know it's a constant, let's go ahead and find it by using a constant angular acceleration formula. This one looks most useful. Omega final is equal to omega initial plus alpha times time. We can solve that for alpha in terms of the things we know. Alpha is equal to omega final minus omega initial over time. And then we can plug in our values with a unit conversion of 2 pi over 60 to get from revolutions per minute into radians per second. Evaluating this, we get an alpha of negative 34.9 radians per second squared. Now we can plug this in to get our tangential component of the acceleration, combining our radius of 0.2 meters with our angular acceleration of negative 34.9 radians per second squared. We multiply those and get negative 7 meters per second squared. That's one part. That's not the overall magnitude of my acceleration. That's the first part here. We now need the centripetal component, and then we can combine them. To get the centripetal component, we'll use a formula for centripetal acceleration that tells us that centripetal acceleration is r omega squared or vt squared over r. We can plug in whichever one is easiest for us. And here it looks like the omega is probably going to be the easiest because we can find our omega by using my omega final is equal to my omega naught plus alpha times time. But this is not my omega final where we're at rest. We're trying to find it at time equals 29 seconds. So this will be my omega at 29 seconds is the thing we care about. Why didn't we need to consider the 29 seconds here? That's because our angular acceleration is constant, which means that my tangential component that's related to that angular acceleration is also a constant. Here, though, because this centripetal acceleration depends on how fast we're spinning at any given point in time, we need to know how fast we're actually spinning at this point in time. We'll find this by plugging in our values, doing whatever unit conversions we need to to make things work, and then we get uh, an angular velocity at 29 seconds of 35.1 radians per second. We can now plug that in to this version of our centripetal acceleration equation, and evaluate it to find a centripetal acceleration of 245 meters per second squared. Finally, we need to combine these using this vector sum. I'm going to give us this, I'm going to give us a little bit more space here to do that. We'll draw a diagram here of our counterclockwise rotation and note that my centripetal acceleration is going towards the center of the circle and my tangential acceleration is slowing down. It's going opposite the direction of my motion because we're slowing down. It says accelerating, but we're going from 10,000 RPM to rest. So that acceleration is a slowing down. It's opposite the motion. From before, we know that my tangential acceleration and centripetal acceleration have values as shown, and we can combine them using this vector sum. That means that the magnitude we get by squaring each component adding them and taking the square root, which results in 245.1 meters per second squared. To get the direction, we now have to do the inverse tangent of the opposite side over the adjacent side. 
Here that opposite side will be that 7, and the adjacent side will be the 245. Or the, yeah, 245. So the inverse tangent of 7 over 245 gives us 1.6 degrees. This means that my overall magnitude is 245.1 meters per second squared at an angle that's 1.6 degrees off the radius, lagging behind it. 